Hello and good afternoon. Thank you for tuning in. I'm hoping that your first day went well. Regular time and place, we would have had assemblies with grade 9, assemblies with grade 10, 11, and 12, and had a chance to welcome you uh, in person. But Ms. Murray and I thought it would be very important uh, to touch base, cover some of the basic pieces um, that you have, you know, remote learning. We put out a couple other videos, so some of it might be redundant. And some of it's the usual things that we do cover in our class assemblies. You know, usually we have three, four a year, and um, some of those common themes, making sure that everybody's always on the same page. So um, really just uh, my part about welcoming you, I, I hope your first day went well. And, you know, if there was anything that kind of got stuck before you a little bit, just relax, take a deep breath. We're going to be fine. I say the same thing to the teachers. And um, I look in the mirror, I tell myself the same thing. We're going to be good. Um, kind of reflective of the schedule that we put together for you to start this uh, school year. As you can see, um, shortened periods each of the days, um, today and tomorrow. And Friday will be that Wednesday schedule, see every class. Only thing different about today and tomorrow is, is this little block of time that hopefully you could take just a few minutes to watch this video from me and Miss Murray. And then um, tomorrow to watch the videos uh, from guidance. So tomorrow there'll be guidance videos for grade nine, 10, 11, and 12. The way that these will all be sent out um, is the way that this one was, uh, just via, via Aspen, okay? And for this one, we will also include the slides for your convenience, all right? So again, I hope your first day went very, very well. Gonna do this one a little bit different. Filming um, videos with Miss Murray is something I do quite a bit now. And uh, we thought we'd flip the script a little bit and um, I'd have her, um, jump in now and I'll come back in later. So let me just, um, no phones in school. So I'll shut that off. And let me just pull up that uh, presentation too. Okay. Just take me a second. Okay, I'm at the, uh, well, I'm at the end of it, and now I'm at the beginning of it. Okay, so again, like I said, just want to do it just a little bit different. Uh, Ms. Murray wants to say hello, so I'm going to bring her in now, and again, I will be back in a little bit. Hello, welcome students, so exciting. We, um, you know, Mr. Tag and I have had some technical difficulties today, and it's just been that's what this is now it's part of the whole whole virtual experience so that's why we have these three days built in and we just hope you know that everything goes well for you and like he said take a deep breath we're gonna we're gonna get there okay this is who we are right you guys for those of you that have been at quincy high you hear me say think work share think work share think work share you know with the morning announcements and everything but what is it what is think work share and now we have a new line in there which is be aware so We'll talk about that a little bit too. So several years ago, Quincy High School went through their accreditation process and teachers, administrators, students, community members all had to come together and decide what does it mean to be a graduate of Quincy High School? And that's how we developed our core values and belief statement, which can really be summed up here. So this is a combination of our academic expectations as well as our social expectations. So we believe that a graduate of Quincy High will be someone who can think for themselves, someone that can work together with other people, and someone that can share their knowledge with the world. The sharing and knowledge of the world is even more important now with this online world that we have because we just want to give you the tools that enable you to be put your best self forward, okay? And then in in the vein of that, we have be aware of self and others. What is your intent and what is your impact? Okay, what are you saying and how are people taking what it is that you are saying? So all of these things are important as we move forward when we come together in person again and also as we live kind of in this virtual world, okay? Social emotional learning. This is, I mean, this is been a part of education forever. And now it's come to the forefront, not only because of the pandemic and the things that families and students faced last spring when school just shut down and everything, everybody's world kind of changed 
instantaneously. And we have evidence of that still on my announcement board are the announcements from the week of March 9th. I can't get over it. So that's how fast things changed. We wanna recognize that. We also wanna recognize that last spring in the media, there were a lot of things that came up that affect our students. So what we're trying to, what we are working on enhancing here at Quincy High School because we this is work that we've been doing what we're trying to do is enhance an environment where students are comfortable to share and I think two of our teachers kind of summed all of this up beautifully teachers last week went through professional development for social emotional learning because some of us are very comfortable with the idea of this and others are just beginning to have a better understanding so I like what Mr. Natalizia said about it it's an opportunity for us to help students quiet the noise so learning can happen. We all have a lot going on in our heads, okay? So if we can kind of sift through that, quiet it down, that'll help us be more present in class. Not only more present, but like what Mr. Iketa says, help students be present in a more honest way. And that's what we want here at Quincy High School. So while you're going through this social emotional learning, okay, I do have to correct something here. The guidance number says 617-376-3381. It's 3351. You'll see that number again later in the slide. So I apologize. I should have uh, should have corrected that before it was up there. Um, but anyway, the guidance number is 617-376-3351. If you need anything, please don't hesitate to call. Then race, diversity, and equity at Quincy High School. Okay, we say our, you know, something we really pride ourselves in is diversity. And then people in the spring kind of questioned how we display that. Right. So we've been taking a look internally and we're asking students and staff and community members, we're asking everybody to come together and help us keep moving forward with this. All right. So like Mr. Tag says, there is no finish line. The beauty is there's been a start. Right. It's been going on here for a long time that teachers and staff have really been trying to embrace the different cultures that we have here. But there's more work to be done and we will grow together. What will remote learning look like? Okay, we got social, emotional, we got race and diversity, we have all this stuff going on. What is this all gonna look like on a computer screen? Okay, well, some things are gonna look a little bit different. We hope that your experience is fantastic, but it's gonna take a little time to get used to it, and that's okay. Um, first is, do you have access to technology? Chances are, if you're watching this video, you do. Uh, if you have a friend that doesn't, please let them know, help them. Go to the Quincy Public School website. There are ample resources there to help students get connected. So if you know somebody out there doesn't have access, please help them get it, okay? Reach out to the school, tell them to give us a call and we will help them get it. Uh, we have the Google IDs, we have Google Classroom codes. We've been kind of ironing that out today. A lot of those are available on Aspen. If for some reason you don't have the code, you're not sure where to find it on Aspen, you can email the teacher directly and they'll let you know what their code is. All right, synchronous learning. That means just like now you're watching this video with me, uh, that, means, that means learning will occur live. So it's a little different actually, but meaning you will log into a Zoom class or a Google Meet and your teacher will be interacting with you live. That also means you're expected to uphold your behavior live in these classroom settings, okay? And we'll get into what that means in a little bit as well. Numeric grading and attendance daily in every class. These are highlighted because these are two big changes from what remote learning looks like in the spring, okay? You're, it's not receives credit, receives no credit. It's a great, all right, you can actually earn a, can actually earn a zero. Please don't, okay? Uh, we're looking, everybody, the way I always see it, everybody starts at 100, right? So you logged on today, you're at 100. Keep it up. Get your assignments in, hand them in, because uh, they will be graded. Let's say you're having trouble with that. It says communication, okay? It says communication now more than ever because you're not walking in the door here. You can't just go to the main office to let someone know something. You can't just walk down to guidance or the dean's office where you can't talk to your teacher real quick after class. We need you to communicate with us when things are getting in the way of your learning. So you can email the teacher, you can call the guidance office, dean's office, main office, just keep us in the loop, okay? Schedule for today, hopefully we got through today. Okay, there were some questions about this. So you, we start with period two. That's the period we start with, not period one, we start with period two. Same schedule tomorrow as we had today. 
then on Friday, you're going to jump to your remote Wednesday schedule. And you're like, great, Mrs. Murray, what is that? I will show you. Your remote learning schedule for Wednesday is a day zero schedule. You see all of your classes on Wednesdays. And even students that are coming into the building, majority of those students are remote. Wednesdays we call our remote day. All learning takes place online. And the times are, are longer than what you, the days today's times were and tomorrow's times are. So they're there on that schedule for you. Starting next week, okay, on Monday, September 21st, you're going to follow the Monday schedule that's here with your period two, period one, period three, and period four. It's only four classes a day. And the reason for that was we kind of felt like if every single day you followed the Wednesday schedule or saw all your classes, that's like a lot of logging in and logging off. It just seemed like a lot to us. So we built in these longer periods where teachers could give you time to work independently, be checking in with you, hopefully give you a break from the screen time a little bit throughout the day. So that's Monday and Tuesday of next week. You'll follow that schedule. Wednesday, look at that. You're back to your day zero schedule. Or are you? Because next Wednesday, September 23rd, is a half day. So what schedule is that, you ask? Here it is. This is what our half day schedules are going to look like on Wednesdays. In years past, Tuesday was our half day. Right now, Wednesdays will be our half days. It is not every Wednesday. The first one for this month is September 23rd. Another half day in October, which might look different. And you're thinking to yourself, what do you mean? October's half day might look different. I'll get to that in a second. Uh, so right now you're looking at like three different schedules we're asking you to follow. You have a schedule for September 16th, 17th. You have Friday is the Wednesday, day zero, remote schedule. Then you're coming in on Monday. You're back to our remote schedule where you only see four classes a day, Monday, Tuesday. That's great. Wednesday, you have the half day schedule. At just about the time where you guys are thinking, where we kind of get in the swing with all this, things are going to change. Okay. What do they say? They say the only thing constant is change. And here it is again. We want to get kids back in school. All right. This is the goal of our school committee. This is the goal. Hybrid scheduling starts on October 13th. So we're fine working on that schedule that works best for Quincy High School. It's very important that it's best for our students, every single one of our students. But to know, to know who those students are, we are implore you to please complete the survey that was sent to families. And it's also available on the Quincy Public School website. And you're going to be emailed this slideshow. The link is live here. If you have not yet selected whether you will join in the hybrid schedule or choose to stay remote on October 13th, you need to let us know. This is an integral part of our planning. All right. Masks. Yep, you saw Mr. Tag wearing his mask. You saw me come over um, wearing my mask. This is a part of our educational landscape now. You know, it's a part of everything. We go to the grocery store. Um, we go to the mall. Everywhere we go, we got to have our mask on, and it's helping. So we ask students that are in the building, you have to have masks. Our teachers will have masks. If you, for some reason, have a medical, something medical that will prevent you from wearing a mask, that needs to be be presented to the nurse, and they are the only ones that can issue you a note to excuse you from wearing a mask in school. You can't be like when you come into school, hey, my mom says I don't have to wear a mask. That is not acceptable. Social distancing guidelines, masks are part of it. You know, a great example of this, and I can't thank Quincy High School students enough, a great example of this was during book distribution. Everybody wore their masks, Everybody maintain the six foot of distance and we're very respectful to all the staff and all the other people present on those days. So that's how we want to be moving forward. Okay. Little kind of a fun video about the importance of social distancing. It can be found here. It's called can't touch this. You may have already seen it, but it's just kind of a fun way uh, to think about, about what all this means. Okay. In a school setting. So Quincy high school academics, it's time to get, down to the nuts and bolts of what it means to be a Quincy High School student. So this is the slides that Mr. Tag alluded to earlier that we would be presenting in a typical assembly. This is far from typical, but still, we're going to let you guys know what it means to be a Quincy High School student. And no better man to do that than Mr. Tag Larry. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Murray. 
Um, you know, I just I, I just want to reiterate it. I think she did a pretty good job of saying how important it is. Um, you students have to let us know what you want to do, whether it's hybrid or remote, so we can build the schedule. Okay, so uh, please, if you do anything, if there's any homework that came out of uh, this, uh, that would be it. Okay, and we're certainly not going to keep you all the way till 2.30 today. Um, so please get that done. Sit with your family, uh, make your decision and um, just let us know, okay? So academics, that's what we're all about, right? And Quincy High School is a different school. So uh, we're a different school and then we're a comprehensive high school. And it really just gives our kids so many different opportunities here um, to be successful and to explore options for their career and for post postgraduate um, education. Comprehensive high school, so what's that mean? It means that we, we do have technical majors here. Some people get kind of caught up in Think of it as vocational schools, which Quincy High School used to have a Quincy Votech and a Quincy High School. Uh, no, now Quincy High School is just a comprehensive high school. We offer 15 technical majors uh, as our upperclassmen know. Um, and yes, you could be in a technical major and uh, you could be taking AP courses. And that's kind of part of us having eight classes. Most high schools, students take seven. You know, we have dual enrollment opportunities. That's where our students are able to take call, uh, classes through Quincy College and garner college credit at a very low price. A uh, common question is, well, are the credits only good at Quincy College? Well, they're certainly good at Quincy College and they do transfer to many of the state schools uh, here. So it's a great opportunity for our kids. Um, we're working out those pieces, just so you know, Mr. Reardon uh, runs our dual enrollment program uh, locally as our guidance counselor at Quincy High School, and he works closely with Mr. Sagala uh, from the superintendent's leadership team. So more information like that will be coming out to you. Um, just, a, just a question that had kind of come up, and it's that last one, you know, if, if you transition to hybrid and you stay remote, will it hurt your GPA? Your grades will be your grades. And like Ms. Murray said, grades will be numeric and they will be calculated in. Um, my biggest advice, be in all your classes. You want to do the best in whatever you do, okay? Um, this is a staple that we put up. Uh, I would say my seniors and juniors would be saying, not that slide again, because you know this, and I hope you know it. I hope you could do this part of the presentation. That's the way that we want it here. So uh, graduation requirements, um, I think of the class of 2024 coming in. This is it. This is the baseline. I'd be standing in that auditorium. I set it to the class of 2021 and 22 and 23. Goal is everyone here is going to graduate. How do you get there? What do you need to do? About being very clear about what the expectations are. Um, so now that you, you have these, I'm not gonna read through them. These are what you're going to have to do in order to graduate um, from Quincy High School. So get very, very familiar with them. Now you can do more. There are local graduation, graduation requirements are local. And then you're gonna have some other things that you're gonna be working with guidance counselors and with department heads to make sure that you take particular classes to set you up for those postgraduate opportunities that you wanna explore, okay? Course, course selection, I can't, couldn't imagine starting to talk about course selection um, already. We're just getting started this year, but you know what? In, in March, we will start doing course selection, but something that I always want to make very clear for our kids, our policy about courses. We want to say that you are in charge of your education. There's nothing more important, you know, uh, besides your family and your good health um, in making sure that you do your best academically and pushing yourself as much as you can and challenging yourself. Now, we offer three levels of, of, um, of study. Uh, college career prep, some people say CCP, honors and advanced. Any mixture of any of those three, our students can do very, very well and have opportunities postgraduate. Um, but just to be clear, if a student is currently in an honors class or an advanced level class, if you're planning on staying in that next year, you have to have a final grade of an 80 or above, okay? And we also do put out, if for students who wanna move up a level, uh, that their final grade should be a 90 or above. Now those, they're not debatable at all. You are the student and you said, Mr. Tag said in that assembly that if I got a 90, I can move up, I'm moving up. 
No one's going to get in your way. Uh, sometimes we have teachers who are concerned, make sure that you understand the challenges of the next level. But you don't push or shove. You're the one, if you achieve these marks, uh, decide your courses that you'll be taking, okay? Um, these are some of the dual enrollment offerings that we've had in the past. I'll be looking to have them again in the future. And again, more information will be coming out. Uh, this is important. This is pretty, if we, like I said, um, if we were doing our assemblies, I'd be meeting with, with you by grades. You know, this one would be, I'd be talking to you juniors, a class of 2022 and our seniors. Uh, if you take an AP course, there's some little differences that we put in that you need to know. You are not required for this year uh, to take the exam if you take AP an AP course. You know, in the past, obviously, you took AP course, you have to take the exam. You do not have to. I'd still strongly recommend it. If you're going to be invested in that class with these teachers, and believe me, the work is going to be rigorous and you will be prepared, I would take it. Am I going to? Um, are we making you have to do it? And no. So it is an option for you. Okay. Um, the registration is always kind of a little bit of a gorilla, uh, you know, to get done. I'm very lucky. Uh, Ms. Dubois and Ms. McKenzie and guidance really kind of take a leadership role with this. Um, please adhere to these deadlines. Okay, we have a lot of AP courses. We have a lot of students taking AP courses, so it's quite cumbersome. But to, if you're going to register for the exam, the deadline is November 6th, okay? And before, usually to bring in a check or cash, we're doing it through um, an online program called Total Registration, where you would pay, you know, be your credit card, um, because, you know, with the with the remote, we're not doing any of the exchanges here at the school, okay? The prices are there, and if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. And again, I, I would say um, your AP teacher would be of great value here, okay? Um, super important, though, if you are an AP, so everyone's joining all the Google Classrooms, AP teachers, you're going to want to join those join codes for the AP course, the AP Classroom. So that's real big, okay? Uh, those technical majors, uh, such a big part of our school. Um, just want to review. I, I've gone over with the ninth grade before, I think a little bit, you know, that you're in that freshman seminar, you're working your way through uh, for our sophomores through seniors. This will sound familiar, but um, when you go, when these, when you as freshmen are done uh, with this year, or it gets to be about March, you say, I really like that plumbing program. I think I want to, you know, go for that. You will select one. Um, one technical major, if you're interested in it, it will be one. And I must tell you that oftentimes they're highly sought after, sought after programs. So how do you decide? So there's only a limited number of spots. So you really need to do your best. You really need to do your best um, when, you're, when you come here. And how does that show? How do you decide when we have plumbing that has... 18 spots and we have 40 students want to go into plumbing. You say, Mr. Tag, what do you do? How do you guys figure that out? And you know, that's our last word, um, competitive programs. I also want to look back up on this slide. I see something that's changed, you know, um, we'll select a major when completing this sophomore year. Really, you're going to pick it after your freshman year now. You know, the hours that uh, are determined by DZ to get the certifications of proficiency that you'd get, you need to be in uh, that major uh, starting with your sophomore year and taking other courses that support it, okay? But let's go back. How, how do you decide who gets in? Well, it's not me, that's for sure, just by myself. But I will tell you what that committee looks at. Some people think, and these are in order, I would say. They look at your attendance and behavior like one and two. And some people say, Mr. Tag, what about academic performance? Doesn't that count? Of course it does. But I think we've found that academic performance in a particular content area isn't what's going to necessarily translate to being successful, let's say, in that plumbing shop. You know what I mean? But the attendance is going to be a big piece. And certainly the way that you get along with your peers and the way that you get along with staff um, would be big pieces. Okay. Um, you get your schedules going. We should be all set. The last day for schedule changes is next Friday. Is um, No, it's next Wednesday, the 23rd. Is the 23rd. 
okay? So if you have any, you should be all, we should be all done by then, okay? So it's been open for a little bit um, and hopefully we're in good shape. But sometimes it's the department head that will help you with these questions and certainly a guidance counselor is available. Um, just about any concerns that you have. If you have a concern for yourself that you need assistance with, um, you know, your guidance counselor, your dean is available for you. Um, certainly myself and Miss Murray. And I, I don't have a, um, not remember the fact that a lot of our students build up great relationships with our teachers. So if there's a teacher that you need, that you're very, very comfortable with, um, maybe the conversation could start with them and they can help guide you to get you assistance. All right. Our nurses are here for students and staff all the time. Um, just so you know, during the remote, we have set up, um, we're following all the protocols of the CDC and, and through DZ, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. Um, any students that are feeling any symptoms, they should not come to school. If they are in school, they'll see the nurse and they'll be placed in a, what we'd call kind of an isolation room apart, okay, because too many of our other students have any other they have their own medical concerns taken care of in there, it wouldn't be safe, but there is a place for them and they will be supervised, um, but we wanna keep everybody healthy, okay? So the number is there for you to use. Uh, we have an absolutely outstanding uh, security team here at Quincy High School. They're on now. Like Ms. Murray said, we have some students in the building now. Um, not as many as we would want, but we'll get a few more with the hybrid and hopefully we will be back. But I, I can't thank these gentlemen enough for what they do. They really enjoy being around the students. And um, remember a lot of the things like with the masks and stuff like that, this is what, this is our educational landscape as Ms. Murray said, this is what we're going to have to do. These gentlemen, along with your teachers and, and the deans, everyone here um, is working to make sure everyone does that to keep everybody safe. Uh, these ones that these gentlemen are right on the front line. So I really appreciate all the work they do and the respect that you give them. Okay. Um, student parking, someday you're going to bring a car back in here, seniors. Seniors will prioritize you first. Okay. Um, the cost is $10 for a spot. It's not for a spot, it's for a pass. You know, you have to get here on time to school to have um, a space to park in in the designated area. You'll have to get the contract and get it signed. Um, no rush now, but if you wanted to get something out of the way and um, you have some time that you can come to the school during your schedule. You can come by and see Mr. McGowan or Mr. Spenlove, Mr. Mulvey or Mr. McGinnis, okay? Um, some of these reminders is like when we're all in school at the same time, I mean, they still count for the kids that are here, you know, the hats and hoods, we wanna see faces. You know, we want people to stay in during um, their regular spaces during lunch. I'll probably see myself going over some of the stuff when we go hybrid and I'm definitely gonna take the advantage when we have students in school that I'll be able to meet with students live. So I'm gonna kind of just move through here. Uh, but some of these reminders that are up here, these are kind of like remote, remote school reminders or if you're in the building during remote time and these will carry for hybrid, sure. Um, just so there's no question, bandanas, I've seen a few of them, not necessarily here, but of the community when I go out, uh, but those would not um, fulfill the requirement uh, of a mask. So when you're in school here, so if you're coming by the school, make sure you have a mask on. Um, you know, we're going to keep our space in the, in the hallways. The hallways have now have directions on it to go, not the hallways, the stairwells have directions, but the hallways, we're going to keep our spacing and we do have the deans in the building and uh, just keep our space overall. The water fountains are, um, are off, you know, to use directly, but you can still use the water filling stations, which is a good thing. Okay. Um, there's a couple of items on this for those people that are in school now, and maybe a preview for when we get to hybrid, we've transformed um, our cafeteria, taken out all those round tables where students would sit together, uh, pulled them out, and we have desks in there, all space six feet apart. Okay, so for the start of the day, uh, something that I think we live here at Quincy High School, we say come early and stay late. You know, it's your school. You're more than welcome to be here. Um, so when school doesn't start till 7.45, breakfast is at 7.15. You know what, I'll ne we'll never deny a student the ability to come in here. If you're here before that, come on in. But I need you to understand, 
that if you come in the building um, before that 745 time, you're going to have to stay in the uh, cafeteria the entire time. Okay. So breakfast will start at 715. You can get, you can get your breakfast at that time. And if you just want to come in and need a place to be, we are open for you, but please just follow that um, guideline for me. Um, after school, um, well, to, to come into the school, entering the school, I think is important uh, during this time of remote with the number of kids that we have in there are three entrances open right now. They're the ones that we traditionally use. Um, the main out on Connington Street, uh, the security entrance and the retainer in the back. Only thing that we do different, we will be locking that back door and the front door at 815. So students would have to come in through the security area. If you're after 815, you have to come in through security. Okay, before we had somebody back there that might let you in and take you to go sign in in the dean's office, you're going to have to come around front. Okay. And uh, when I think about the security office, again, just a reminder, if you have anyone that's going to be a visitor, if you're going to have um, a parent, a guardian that's going to come by, reminder, they, they're going to need a mask on as well. If they can make an appointment ahead, that's always good. It's a diagram that we'd always put up. Safety is very important. That backpack and lock can get a little bit crazy. I don't think it's going to be too crazy now during the remote learning. But um, those arrows, uh, Russell Park, um, and take you right to the rotunda. And you can see you can go right up Huntley Road and exit. There are cutouts up on Coddington Street if you come to the front of the building. Um, please just be careful. Lots of people around. And um, I would say when we ever do get busy, if you're trying to drop someone off at 740, boy, that C Street to Coddington Street can be <clears throat> very, very busy. All right. Uh, we have the bus passes in place. A lot of kids picked them up during um, when they had the book distribution, when the kids picked up their books. Please come by. Saves you money. Now, this is incorrect um, because it says monthly pass $30. That, that's not that's not true. We, we don't sell the, the pass. We really just more do the Charlie card now. So we used to sell the monthly pass. So the pass that a student gets from Quincy High School just allows them to go up to the T to put money on it. What it does, it ensures, like it says on here, the student rate. So there are no monthly passes to be purchased. It is just a um, the Charlie card, okay? But you need to be a student to get it, and Ms. Bassett can help you. All right? Please uh, just stay connected with this stuff. Uh, there's a lot of people have a lot of links. Ms. Murray is definitely out there uh, looking for followers to her Twitter. Uh, join, a, join right in. Uh, people need friends on Facebook. Uh, guidance ca um, staff does a terrific job in putting out information. Mr. Mahoney is very much out there. Um, please never want you not to know what's going on. And certainly we have uh, the Quincy Public Schools website. So uh, a brand new website that's pretty nice. So use that as well. And at any time, these numbers, again, we're sending this out as a um, slideshow. Please like, print out this page, just have it handy. You ever need anything, it's the biggest thing that I can ever say is that we're hoping that is your school. All right, students, we're real glad to have you back. Just want to give a little quick shout out. You know what, we've talked about Mr. Mahoney. We talked about being here early and being late, um, that we haven't forgot about the extracurricular activities, okay? So right now, I'm sure a lot of you are already involved in this fall sport. Um, certainly football and competitive chair have been moved. Um, we will have other virtual groups that go on. We might have some that even meet. So uh, very important to stay connected. Uh, we will be putting out all that information. Everybody on here right now, everyone listening to this should have a Gmail on their student account, not a Gmail that has their last number like for going on to Google Classroom. And it, please tell your parents and guardians, you need to have a Gmail. All right, because we have a problem with Comcast and Yahoo. So I just want to make sure everyone stays connected, everyone's involved, and that we communicate the best way that we can. Uh, my best to each one of you students for a terrific 2020-2021 uh, school year. And I look forward to seeing each of you personally soon. Let me just sign off and again this will be um 
this will be um, this will be live uh, for everybody. There we go. Sorry, that took a little bit, but I am anxious to see everybody come into the building um, and the PowerPoint itself with those links that Ms. Murray showed will be